Welcome. Our opening hymn is Lord, You Have Come, hymn number 503. Please join and sing. God is good all the time. All the time. Good. Let us begin our prayers in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, Christ in a special way reminds us today in the gospel that he came for all of us. His mission is universal. His love, his mercy, and justice is for everyone. Sometimes we don't feel it. Sometimes we don't allow people around us to feel it. For the times that we have failed in our trust, the times that we have failed to pray as we should, the times that we have failed to love God and our neighbor as we should, let us with humility bow our heads and ask him for his mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Today we will recite the Gloria. We will recite it from the first page. Together. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of Father. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. 
You alone are the most Lord. You alone are the most high, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. We join our special intentions for this Mass with the official prayer of the Church. O oh God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no one can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just, for my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord, and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation, and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain, and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted, acceptable on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. Thank, Thank you, God. God. Uh, responsorial Psalm, O God, let all the nations praise you. and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth among all nations, your salvation. May the nations be glad and exult because you rule the peoples in equi equity. The nations on the earth you guide. Praise you, O God. May all the people praise you. May God bless us, and may all the ends of the earth fear him. O God, let all the nations A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you, Gentiles. Inasmuch as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. Just as you once disobeyed God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now disobeyed, in order that by virtue, virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon, and behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon, but Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. The disciples of Jesus came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, it is not right to, to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. God is good all the time. Can I have that in a row closing, please? Thank you so much. Thank you. So when you get a chance this week, um, just, just buy him a cup of coffee because he saved you about five minutes today. By giving me this, I can see what I'm going to be talking about, then I can be brief. If I didn't have this, I'll keep going and on and on and, you know, who likes that? So thank you for taking care of the congregation. <laughs> um, the universal mission of Christ. Don't be like the apostles. Don't you like politics? In politics, they just take a clip and leave everything. You know, they leave what was said before and after and just take a clip and run it all over the TV, okay? Somebody might say, can you believe that the priest said, don't be like the apostles? No, that's not what I'm saying. Let me explain. Don't let you and I, we shouldn't do what the apostles did today. We can be like them. You know, they were human too, right? They made their own mistakes. Peter denied Christ how many times? Three. They made their own mistakes. Paul, before he became converted, before he went through his spiritual experience, he was Saul. He was a bad guy. But I'm saying the human part of them got them today in today's gospel. And what did they do? They weren't so nice to the woman who needed help in today's gospel that we read from gospel of Matthew chapter 15. If you look at the first reading that we have today from Isaiah, we are reminded that, wow, God's mercy God's goodness, God's universal goal for salvation is for everybody. Because Isaiah reminds us today that, yes, it, the, the, the foreigners, they praise God and will be brought to the holy mountain too. In today's second reading, Paul proclaimed himself the apostle to the Gentiles. And in the gospel, Jesus nailed it. He nailed it by reminding all of us that his mission is universal. Isn't that what we, we call the church Catholic? We all know the meaning of the word Catholic, right? 
It means universal. The universality of the church is tied to the universality of the mission of Christ. And that's exactly the reason why in Vietnam today, this, this same reading that they will be reading today in Vietnam, the same reading that they will be reading in Kenya, in Australia, in Bangladesh, in Canada, it doesn't matter where we go. Even in the remote part of Iraq, where they still allow some Christians to exist. Same reading in any Catholic church today. That's the universality of the church because the mission is the same. You may not understand the language, but it's still the same. The apostles, they kind of forgot that for a minute. Jesus had to remind them. And Jesus reminded him, them by teaching them, by using the woman in today's gospel to teach them. So we shouldn't act like the apostles. You look around the world, the challenges, letting the moment get the best of us. Some people just give in and go with the flow. Sometimes the going with the flow is not the best. It's not even good. It might be the cultural expectation. It might be the societal expectation. But Jesus is saying, rise up to the occasion. Do the right thing. Teach. Even when it's difficult. The gospel says, the woman is a Canaanite. She's not a Jew. And the cultural thing is salvation is only for the Jews, right? The Messiah came for the Jews. And Jesus took them to an uncomfortable territory, a neighborhood that they're not used to. Let's go and preach in this region. They're not used to that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Jesus said, yep, yep, we are going. They went to that area. We have to understand, we are talking about 2,000 plus years ago, right? I was in Iraq in 2010 when I read that all oh, women in Kuwait can now apply for international passport without a man signing off on it. In 2010, oh, the women in Saudi Arabia, they cannot get their driver's license and drive. Not too far from today. It just happened not too long ago. So I, I gave you those two, two examples then to take you back to 2,000 years how it was for a woman to come up and speak up and approach a bunch of men, right, the apostles, and broke in and said, have pity on me. Who gave you the right? I'm a man. You're a woman. I am here, and you are here. Who gave you the right to even, even break our silence to ask for help without going through a man to talk to Jesus? That was challenging for her. She was courageous. She had perseverance. The cultural thing at that point was for the apostles to say, dismiss her. They told Jesus, send her away. Who is she? Speaking up, asking for favor. There's no man on, he, on her side. The cultural thing is, don't listen to her. That was the cultural thing to do. It was wrong then, and it's wrong today. Jesus used the opportunity to teach the apostles. And how did he do that? He made a statement to the woman, and the woman responded with perseverance. My daughter is sick. I, I need healing for her. Probably the husband is de dead. Probably nobody to help her. Nobody to even get any kind of medication if they had those things in those days. All she needed was I heard about this miracle worker. His name is Jesus. I, I heard that 
He has been able to do stuff for other people. I just need something for my daughter. She persisted. Yes. What is good for others is also good for me. She asked for justice. She asked for mercy and love. She asked for equality. And Jesus said, Oh woman, your faith is so strong. Let it be done to you as you wish. And there was a miracle right there. What she asked for was given to her. She had to rise. She had to stand up for what she needed. It has been done to others. I need that miracle too. Okay. It's a story that we know. Have pity on me. The woman was like saying, me too, right? Me too. I need that love too. I need that compassion. I need that miracle. I need that, I need that mercy for my family too. And it was given to her. If she didn't speak up and persevere, if she had listened to the apostles to who tried to brush her away, not to bother them and bother their master Jesus, maybe the miracle would not have happened. How about you and I? Do we give up easily? Do we just ask for once and we get tested? Did you notice that Jesus tested her today with a question? Oh, we, we, we can't do that. Yes, she said, yeah, if it's good for others, it's good for me too. That's basically what she was saying. When we get tested in our own prayer life, we ask for something. Do we give up easily or do we persevere? You know, we can be asking for this. This is the favor that we want from God, right? We start praying. Oh, I need this to happen in my personal life, in my professional life, in the life of my parents or, or brothers and sisters, good friends, relatives. We ask. We pray. And then it doesn't happen. We just give up. There's no point praying. This is the hand of God right here. This is what we need. When we start praying, God might decide, oh, he's God. And we are not. He can do whatever he wants. Before we even ask, he might drop it on our palms and we get a favor. But we can start praying. God might test us like he tested the woman in today's gospel. God might say, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it, but at my own time. It's not going to be this month. It's, gonna, it's not going to be this quarter. It might be four months. It might be a year. It could be six months. God might just keep, you know, moving to meet us. We keep praying. But when we give up, what happens? There's a gap. There's a gap. It, it turns back. Then it's up to God whether he wants to drop it or he wants us to get back to us on track and keep praying and keep persevering like the woman that we had in the gospel today. If we persevere, have faith, gradually we will get it. That's what happened to the woman today. And in order not to be like the apostles, we have to challenge ourselves. Do we stand up for the truth even when it's difficult? When we are hanging around our friends, the cultural thing to do is to do this and that and that, you know, to look cool. That way your friends won't get mad at you. You join the club and do, say the wrong thing and do the wrong thing and treat people the wrong way and say every wrong thing on the book just because the society, that's what the society expects. That's what the neighborhood expects us to do. That's what our group of friends expect us to do. Jesus said to the apostles, he says to us today, we got to rise up to the occasion as Christians. We sh should have opportunities to teach. Some of you that have children, find opportunities to teach when they treat other people the wrong way. When they act like the apostles today, you call son, daughter, have a seat. Don't do that. That's not the way it should be. Oh, but my friends, they all do. No, 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 no. I don't worry. Don't worry about your friends. I'm worried about you. When you do it again and again, maybe one of your friends will join you and do the right thing. As Christians, our actions 
our words should be able to promote mercy, justice, equality, and lack of prejudice. The apostles, they, they didn't get it, they didn't quite get it today, but Jesus taught them and he's teaching all of us and reminding all of us. So I want to thank you for your faith. I want to thank you for everything that you do to be the best Christian you can be out there. Thank you for waking up to join us for Mass today. May God in his love and mercy continue to show us the same mercy, the same compassion, the same love he showed to the woman who cried out, have pity on me. I don't know about you. We all have prayers that will sound like that desperate, like the woman that we heard in the gospel today. Have pity on me too. Whatever it is that you want to pray for on this day, don't forget the consecration is a very powerful time for us to lift up those intentions to God and say, have pity on me too. Hear my prayers. You know my need. Please grant me all my need. May he continue to bless us. May he continue to bless our families and answer our prayers. In the name of the Father, that the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith to be found on the first page. Together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life. Through God from true God, begotten, not made, comes from social with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the blessed, in the life and world to come. Amen. Let us with confidence of our prayers to God, who knows best how to take care of us. That the faith and joy of believers attract unbelievers into God's loving arms, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that people of every race and culture seek to understand those who are different from themselves. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those on the verge of giving up find strength to persevere. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That every immigrant and alien be treated with dignity as a beloved child of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who form this community of faith root out prejudice and welcome every stranger. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, we now present to God those special intentions, those have pity on me prayers that we have for ourselves, for our family members, and our friends. Go 
good and gracious God. We give you thanks for the opportunity to gather this morning to worship you, for the opportunity to see the light of a new day. Father, we ask you to hear our humble prayers. Hear the prayers who are spoken aloud and those prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Grant us this needs through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the offertory. The next thing is the summons, hymn number 383. Please join and sing. and sisters in Christ, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It really is truly right and just and our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. And by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord. And all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At whose command, we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son, and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord. Advance the peace and salvation of the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Timothy, our Archbishop, the other of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance into your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
rise and pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from our distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your apostles, as you say to all of us here today, peace I give you, my peace I leave you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We wish each other the sign of peace. We cannot. the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Jesus, who always has pity on us. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
speak. And we'll have, um, as you know, yesterday was the Feast of Assumption. It wasn't um, a holiday of obligation because it, it fell on a Saturday. But we're going to have a special song, post-communion song, dedicated to Mary, the mother of Jesus. Can you tell us the number of the song? The number is 695. 695. Mm -hmm. upon the mother of Jesus to continue to join us in our prayers, especially our special intentions for this Mass today. Together we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pray. May partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, O Lord, that confirmed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for a quick announcement.
Thank you. Thank you. So, yes, don't forget, just join us. We have some, some lunch. Join us. And um, Jesse got some goodies, some sweets and desserts that we can enjoy also. Um, you leave today in a few hours for TDY, two weeks. He's going to Istanbul, Ankara, and um, Izmir, uh, Australia too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so we'll see you in about two weeks. Um, we have some new faces, okay? We have some people that are new. Don't be shy like me. If you are new, please stand and tell us your name and where you came from, please. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody master the courage. There has to be somebody <laughs> else, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Stay standing, keep standing. Just tell us your name, where you came from, and whatever you want to say. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> from where? Scotland. Wow. Is, it, is the weather the same? <laughs> I can imagine New Mexico. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Let's put our hands together for her. <laughs> Anybody else? Are we sure? <laughs> okay, great. Anybody leaving last weekend? Last weekend? Okay, great. Well, thank you for being here. And I want to talk about something here since I still have about seven minutes or something. You know, I can't let you guys go that way. Everybody got this, right? Okay. So this past week, we got a message from CPTS, the finance people, telling us that, you know, a few people write checks once in a while. They said they won't be able to cash personal checks on behalf of the chapel anymore because this is the way it goes. Some of you may not know. I'm going to have somebody, when we have our first parish council with this rotation, maybe I'll have somebody make a presentation to you how this goes in the chaplain call. When you drop your donation on the basket, on the plate, the ushers will do that. The two ushers or three will count it, and it will be put in our little deposit box. And the enlisted staff, part of their job with the account manager, they will get for all the services, Catholic and Protestant, okay? They will collect all that and deposit it. And straight, it goes to San Antonio. That's the headquarters, right? If we need a dime for anything, we have to apply. Tell them what we need, it, fill out a form, and then they will let us. It's controlled around the Air Force. Every collection around the Air Force, not just Catholic, it's controlled in San Antonio. That's where we have our headquarters, OK? As you know, COVID is still going on. But it was worst, March, April, May, and part of June. So around the Air Force, what happened? Collection went down. So when I got here, there was a little bit of money left. It's my goal to make sure that the next priest will also have some money left, right? It's my goal. So and where, where does it come from? come from the little thing that we put in the, bas in the basket, in the plate. Every so I came up with this. It's my idea, but somebody else did it, okay? <laughs> with this a little uh, QR code, you just take a picture with your, with your phone. If you don't have the cash, some people have told me in the past it's difficult to get cash on a Sunday morning around here. We all know that cash is very difficult to get around here. So it, I, I've done it several times since I've been here. I did it again on Friday morning. It took me not even three minutes. Once you have your card, it takes like two minutes to make a donation. That way, it's a secured chaplain call website, it's Air Force website. So when you do this, you'll be helping the parish a little bit and the chapel programs. Has anybody in your unit, I'm not talking about having food in the chapel, in your units. Have you ever 
in how many years you've been in a chaplain? Have you ever had chaplains like bring food to the units and say, hey, thank you for everything? Have you ever had that? Okay. The airmen. We have contracts that we are trying to establish. Some of those contracts come from what we call CTOF, chapel tithes and offerings, the funds. So I will encourage everybody, every once in a while, just keep a copy of this. If you want to do it on Sundays, you can even set it up to $5 every week until you leave here, to $10 every week. One time thing that will take you two minutes and you're done. I must also say this. Any pro I don't think we have many Protestants around here. They do it way more than Catholics. They are here in their donations, and we are here. This is my first time of talking about money since I've been here. It's been a long time since I've been here. So I would, it's an uncomfortable topic for me. I don't like to do it, but I just wanted to get it out there, that we need people to step in a little bit more and just give and you shall receive, right? The quote is in that little thing. God will continue to bless us in some capacities. So every once in a while, just take your phone. If you, if you don't want to be bothered with it every week, just set it up from now until you leave. $10, $5, 20 whatever you want to donate every Sunday. It will be done, automatic, if you do it one time. So you have a date, you can stop it. That way you don't forget. Thank you for your faith. Thank you for being here. God is good? All the time. All the time? God is good. Please rise. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is Fail No We Are Christians, hymn number 583. Please come and sing. Thank you.